G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, it's Tuesday night here in Australia, so that means it's kind of Tuesday morning uh, over in the States and the markets are starting to move already, as I sort of thought they would. But I found a really interesting story here. So we know about Grayscale, they're still buying Bitcoin. PayPal's buying up 70% of all the Bitcoin. Cash App's buying up more Bitcoin. And, you know, uh, Sky Ridge is coming out and they're buying Bitcoin. There's all these people buying Bitcoin. Well, here's another one. A poker site buys $100 million worth of Bitcoin every month to pay the players in BTC. If you're unable to see what's coming, I don't know what else I can do other than say it for you. There is a massive Bitcoin shortage coming. Now, it's not going to happen overnight, but within the next few months it will. And this price will absolutely skyrocket. We don't even have the retail FOMO yet. This is all very early investors. So if you're in now or considering getting in now, you will still be considered an early investor. Look, there's always someone earlier. Satoshi, you know, himself was the earliest one. But after that, you're still going to be considered early. You go and check Google Trends and see uh, how buy Bitcoin is going. It is low compared to where it was in 2017. There is a much bigger base right now. And there is so many payment ramps out there. So many on and off ramps like PayPal is massive. They are only selling to America at the moment. Nowhere else. And half of America, if not even more, it'd be more. It wouldn't even be remotely close to half haven't woken up to Bitcoin yet. They have no idea. The majority of the world hasn't woken up to Bitcoin yet. Yeah, this price is going to rocket massive in my personal opinion. This is not financial advice. Please don't take it as financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, this is just my personal opinion from what I've seen after being in this space for a few years and learning how to read charts and sentiment, you know, public sentiment and things like that. Mainstream media is hardly touching this stuff. It's not that there's no information out there from mainstream media. There is a little bit, but it's nowhere near, you know, at the front of uh, your, you know, local news station and local newspaper. When that stuff starts to happen, watch what happens to the price. It is going to skyrocket. Now, there is something that I saw here. Previous Bitcoin bull run patterns suggest current run could see 160K top and a possible bottom of 25,000. So for me, if 25,000 is gonna be the bottom, all the Bitcoin I am buying will be long-term hodl until we hit 25,000. But look, that's still gonna be based on what the actual top is. I have to wait and see what the top is. If the top becomes something like 300, 400, 500,000, you know, I'm not saying it's going to go there, but look, it's possible. It's not completely out of the realms then my bottom would be more something like really 50 to 100,000. But I am thinking at least 20,000. Uh, we won't see 20,000 again. There's just too much institutional adoption now. I think th the bottom will be higher than our current uh, low. That's, again, my personal opinion, not financial advice. But it's interesting to see that others are thinking exactly the same. Now, we do, do have some slightly unpleasant news. So Biden plans for former chair and noted Bitcoin bear to lead the US Treasury. So this is a bit of a worry. So I think uh, her name is uh, Jeanette Yellen. Uh, he's the nomination to serve as the secretary. And she was quite bearish on cryptocurrencies uh, back in the 2017 bull run. She was part of the Obama administration. But look, we can only hope that uh, she has changed her mind because back then she was saying Bitcoin was anything but useful uh, and she didn't think, uh, well, basically she dismissed the notion of uh, that the Fed was looking into issuing a digital dollar. Well, I can assure you that has all changed right now. But, you know, it would be nice if we had someone who was a lot more crypto friendly uh, and, and a bit more of an innovator getting in there because if they're against cryptocurrencies, then really they're just against innovation at the moment. They are from the old guard, the old school, uh, and they will just stifle uh, innovation uh, and us going forwards. But look, people can change and we can only hope that if she gets in, her, her attitude has changed and it may well have. We will just have to wait and see. Now some really big news. It was only like maybe 48 hours ago, people were reporting that they were worried that you know there wasn't gonna be enough 
enough ETH locked up for ETH 2.0 to launch. And in 48 hours, we went from we only had maybe a third uh, there to we're done. ETH 2.0, it's official. It is launching as of December 1st. In 48 hours, it just all got filled. So if you're considering getting into ETH 2.0, it's happening. Before it was a bit, you know, kind of, oh, I don't want to have my coins locked up if ETH 2.0 is going to be put even further back. It's official. It is now happening. It's been confirmed. There's enough in there locked up for ETH 2.0 to happen. Now, I haven't locked any of my ETH up yet. I do plan on doing it though. I will keep uh, probably about half of my ETH uh, not in ETH 2.0 and maybe half in ETH 2.0. Because the thing you got to remember with locking ETH up is that it's going to be locked up for anywhere from sort of two to four years. You're not going to be able to touch it. It's just simply going to stake. So, you know, if all you've got is 32 ETH and you want to be able to sell some to take some profits in that, don't lock it up in ETH 2.0. Again, personal opinion, not financial advice. But if you're in, in it for the long haul and you believe in it, then yeah, get it locked up. But again, you need a minimum of 32 ETH. So uh, that costs a bit these days. Uh, that is not cheap. Now, another interesting story I found. Gold sinks as Bitcoin price nears record high. So Bitcoin continues to go up and gold goes down. Now, I was a little bit unlucky. I bought gold nearly at the top. I bought it at 19,900, uh, 1900, something like that. And so it's dropped down a bit. So I have lost a bit, but I did take some out uh, and put it into some altcoins and I have uh, well and truly made that money back. Uh, so yeah, can't complain. But look, in all fairness, I don't think gold's going to go down too much. And I have a sneaky suspicion that whoever gets in uh, to the US uh, Treasury Secretary and all of that, uh, they are going to say that we go back to a bit of a gold standard. It's not going to be a complete gold standard. That they, they just won't do that. But I think it will be partially backed by gold. And I think the gold price uh, will go up. That's my personal opinion anyway. Again, no, nothing I say is financial advice. Please don't take it as financial advice. But there is something out there that says gold and silver have been severely... Uh, their price has been severely suppressed by central banks and things like that. Uh, and I forget where it is. I'll have to find the chart uh, another time. But it says that gold should be worth about $29,000 an ounce. Now, whether that's true or just a bit of, you know, speculation and all the rest of it, that would be interesting because it also says that silver should be worth around about $2,000 to $5,000 per ounce. Now, look, gold's only worth $1,800 right now, and I think uh, silver is only worth, God, I think about $70 or $80 per ounce. So imagine those kind of spikes. So, you know, I'm not going to go out and, you know, cash in all my gold and all my silver, certainly not but I am going to take some of the profits. Uh, I didn't make any profits from gold, unfortunately, but again, I turned them into some alts that did pretty well. But I am going to take some of the profits I got from silver because silver has performed fairly well for me. And I'm going to put those uh, into some cryptocurrencies at the moment because they are just the more likely bet. There's no guarantee that, you know, this happens and we go back to a, you know, sort of semi-gold standard, although I, I suspect that is what will happen and the price of gold will go up substantially. How much, I don't know, you know, I think it's unlikely to go to $29,000 per ounce. But look, that's what they could do to solve their debt problems is just push the price of everything up. Uh, and then, you know, again, it covers off all their debt. Just, you know, unsure whether that's actually what's going to happen though. We'll have to wait and see. Now, XRP. Wow, XRP has absolutely been on a rip tear. And for everyone who doubted XRP, uh, and there's a lot of hate out there, and look, even I've questioned it, questioned it at times, but sometimes you got to, not sometimes, a lot of the time, you have to go against the grain a little bit. Now, not bet against the trend. The trend is your friend, but go against the grain. Quite, not, yeah, it's hard to say. I won't say quite often, but at least a reasonable amount of the time when people are telling you something shit and it's no good, it quite often turns out to be good. Not always. Look, there's definitely times where people are telling you shit because something is shit. But if they're telling you it's shit just because of a matter of opinion, do some research. Now, again, you don't have to like the fundamentals of Ripple. You don't have to like, you know, what it's about. But let's go over here. This is what Ripple has done. 
Look at that. Boom, it is fired up. Now it got up to way up here. This is against the Bitcoin chart. So it's definitely had a really good pullback. And even in the dollar chart, it had a bit of a pullback. It got up to 90 cents and pulled back to 70 something. So XRP has done well. But what's disappointing is Coinbase, of course, went down while this was happening. It is regular. It used to be Bitfinex. Uh, it was uh, Binance back in the 2017 bull run. And now it's Coinbase. They just, these... Exchanges again, I, I don't understand why. I wish I knew why. It'd be awesome if someone could tell me. And if you know, please let me know why do they keep crashing when prices start to spike? How are they not ready for what's coming? They already experienced 2017 and saw what was happening there. They must know what is about to come. How does suppressing the price and making sure it doesn't go up too high help them? Wouldn't it just you know, the price would go so high, they're selling the stuff. Wouldn't they make more money? Uh, you know, one of my theories, and this is all it is, is it's just a theory, I guess, is that they don't want it to go up so high that automatically it kind of prices a lot of people out. They want it to just keep slowly building, slowly building, basically just drag it out so there's more money to be made over a longer period as opposed to just one quick burst of money. That That's, that's you know, one of my theories. That's my most sort of, likely theory that I have in my head that that's what they're doing. They are suppressing the price so it doesn't get out of control too fast and this can last longer and they can continue to rake in money for longer. Other than that, I just can't understand why they would do it. And please let me know down below what your thoughts are. You know, why does this keep happening? It can't simply be that uh, they're, you know, what are the servers and things uh, aren't up to scale. They've had years to get rid of get rid get ready for this. They have experienced this back in 2017. I just I can't believe that it's a technical glitch. I think again they're suppressing it. Now if that's true, I guess there's kind of a good side, and the good side is that it gives everyone else time to get into the market before it just gets so crazy that everyone's priced out. But also it means that you know we can't get to the I guess you know the bigger valuations faster. So there's, you know, a yin and a yang and up and a downside for that. Uh, again, let me know down below what your thoughts are. All right, here we go. This is the big one. Now I need to refresh this, but let's have a look. $578 billion. It's up 4.4% and Bitcoin has had a recovery. Only a couple of hours ago, this was at 18,300. So now it's, now it's at 18,900. Let's have a refresh and see what happens. Oh, it's dropped back down. All right, uh, and this has dropped back down. So there you go. Still quite volatile at the moment. But look, that volatility uh, in Bitcoin, i.e. it's kind of ranging, it's not really going up by a lot and it's not really going down for a lot, is when all the money starts to pile into uh, the alts. And again, have a look at XRP. Over 100% in 17, uh, 7 days and up 30% in the last 24 hours. Now look, this was higher again. It got up to... Uh, 90 cents, so it's had a good retracement. People are already starting to take profits. Now, I did predict that we would go to all-time highs before the end of November. I could be wrong there. We're running out of time, but I'm still not you know, 100% sold. It won't happen. It could happen towards the end of this week, over the weekend. Uh, and again, we've still kind of got seven days left. So really, it gives us till you know, next Tuesday for it to happen. It is possible. We'll just have to wait and see. But what I would like to say is that if you think this is crazy, again, if you haven't been in the cryptocurrency space for long and you think, oh, this is amazing how much these alts have moved, you haven't seen anything yet. It is going to get crazier. It is going to be like this for a sustained period and the jumps are going to be even bigger. More so in the dollar terms, you know, these are still pretty good pumps. But once we get towards the end of the cycle when there is real retail FOMO and, you know, people, and it will be all around the world this time because the payment avenues, the gateways will be there, when they're just going in and, you know, they could be buying XRP for who knows what, you know, maybe $10, $20, uh, you know, who knows what that could push the price up to. And again, I'm not saying it will get to $10 or $20. I'm pretty confident it'll get to $9, $10, easy. $20, 30 or more, 
look, who knows? And again, you know, there's all those conspiracies that XRP becomes the uh, global sort of world currency, or at least the intermediary between all the banks and that. And I did do a story yesterday that XRP are trying to get their ledger uh, being used by all the banks for their CD, CDCs, uh, CBDCs, sorry. Uh, if that happened, that could definitely push up the XR price quite high. Uh, again, how high, who knows? But let's have a look. What are the big movers? Stella. They've done really well. Now, I've got a bag of Stella and I have a bag uh, of XRP, so I'm absolutely stoked. And you can see they've had good pullbacks. Uh, th this is not their top. They went higher, so they're already having their pullbacks. They're pumped for about, you know, not even really 24 hours. They're having a retracement, so profit's being taken out. And basically what happens is these will pump up really high. It'll get to its kind of, you know, flash point where it can't really go any higher based on what we have. Then people will start to take profits. They already are taking profits, but more people will take profits. And then Bitcoin goes on its next run. But these prices won't fall down to their lows that they were at before. They will be slightly higher. It's like a set of uh, sort of steps that are more pointy. So it goes up and then instead of a flat curve it starts to drop back down basically exactly like a normal market kind of thing uh, again pumps up like this and then has a steep re decline but not down to these lows it'll only come down to about here and then it'll start to do the same thing again and then by the end of the cycle there should be some really good returns again not financial advice but let's look double digits double digits the first you know 10 or so are all double digits and then everything else is still basically high single digits and everything has basically pumped by double digits over the last seven days not quite everything empty set dollar obviously had a pullback but it's starting to uh you know make its move already now let's have a look were there any big losers not really i mean 20 percent sushi went on such a run so that's not too bad quant Nexo, Aave uh, has been, you know, getting hammered a bit, but again, it pumped up pretty high. So you've got to expect that these happen. But again, really, there's only two that are in double digits, and then the others are just single digits. But they're still up over the seven days. Obviously, Aave not doing as well at the moment, but again, that's to be expected because it had a really big pump. So the losers aren't too bad at all. Uh, Ren, a bit of a pullback, but look, I'm happy because that means I'll be buying some Ren uh, when I do my next dollar cost average, I really like Ren. I believe in Ren, so any pullbacks, I'll be jumping on board for that. All right, ETH to BTC. Let's have a look. Very similar to XRP. Massive pump. Had its pullback. And look, this is just one day. This is just one day where they've really sort of well, it's not just one day. This is a couple of days ETH has been going for. But the alts really only just started to pump in the last sort of 24 hours. So there could be more. Of course, there's going to be some kind of pullback. Excuse me, but the, the alts might continue pumping for the rest of the week until sort of Friday. You know, maybe Thursday night again. Weekend retracement, highly likely. Uh, and, you know, people take those profits and then they put them uh, into Bitcoin or just have cash reserves sitting on the side. It's hard to know what they're going to do. But Ethereum has way outperformed Bitcoin at the moment. Way outperformed it. And last but not least, let's go over to the big daddy of them all. And as I said, a weekend retracement. But it even lasted into Monday. But look, this is what we call a spinning top candle. This is basically indecision. The market doesn't know what it wanted to do. But again, it's been in a general uptrend. A general uptrend for quite some time. So for me, if I saw a spinning top on a Monday and I knew that the Sunday had already had the pullback, that would generally mean I would want to go long. Now, I don't day trade. I mean, I don't leverage trade or even really day trade. But if I was going to, for me, that would be an indication. I think things are about to bounce. But it's not a guarantee. So if you get into leverage trading, and again, I don't do it, make sure you understand stop losses and all the rest of it. Because if it goes the other way, you don't want to just lose all your money. But for me, that would have been a bullish sign for me. I would have been like, this is going to pop. Uh, again, it's in a general uptrend. It's had its weekend pullback. It gets to Monday and the market's just not sure what's going on. But again, with all this other massive news that's going on in just the crypto space in general, but especially BTC, 
I would have been longing that straight away. I would have been like, yep, I would have put my long on. And again, I would have used the stop loss and all the rest of it just in case I was wrong. And you would have had a nice pump there. And now, look, we'll have to wait and see. But we just keep gradually getting closer and closer to that. I do think Bitcoin will continue to creep up. And I am, you know, somewhat hopeful that Bitcoin is going to knock out that all-time high sometime this week. But look, it might not happen this week. It could be Monday, Tuesday next week. You know, again, we have another uh, weekend pullback. But just as I've said before, sometimes they come sort of Thursday, Thursday night. But it's usually anywhere from sort of Thursday night to sort of Monday morning. Uh, so the best time really to buy Bitcoin uh, is over those days. And if you're going to go long, go long on a sort of Monday or a Tuesday. Uh, take your profits on the Thursday. Uh, again, that's if you're into leverage trading, and I'm not, and so please don't take that as financial advice. Uh, that is just what I see from these uh, patterns. A lot of these red days, they're weekends. It's either Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and again, on occasions, Monday, but it's those uh, spinning tops that you often see on the Monday. Generally, the Mondays aren't the really big ones. It's just more the indecision, uh, you know, things like over this. This is quite possibly a Monday. I don't know. I could be wrong. I'd have to check but it wouldn't surprise me. All right, that's it from me. Please hit that like button down below. Hit the subscribe button. I put out videos every day. Things are starting to get really, really exciting. Now, if you have yourself a good position right now, and look, you know, particularly if you're in the 10, 20, 30, $40,000 range worth of cryptocurrencies and you've got a good mix of high caps, mid caps, and low caps, my personal opinion, and that's all it is, it's just personal opinion, is you may find yourself a millionaire sometime next year. It is quite possible. Now, not guaranteed, and again, that is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This is just going on from what I've seen happen uh, in the markets before. Now, it hasn't happened to me. I didn't have enough money to put into the market back in 2017. And this time round, I've put in what I can afford. Look. I may not make a millionaire, but I'm sure I'm going to do much, much better than any other time I would have been able to in my life previously and in any other way, shape or form that I've been able to do previously. Uh, you know, look, if I make a millionaire, that will be absolutely outstanding. And, you know, multi-millionaire, who knows? It happens. People who are new to the space probably don't believe it and think there's no way. There has been people that have put $500 into a coin and become near millionaires. There may well have even been people that have become millionaires. Now, please don't get me wrong. That is those really low uh, altcoins that they've done that. You know, basically $500 into an ICO that just went off its head and they sold at the right time. That is not normal. But definitely people who put in $1,000, $2,000, $3,000, $5,000 uh, into ICOs became millionaires in the last 2017 uh, bull run. But, you know, only the smart ones left millionaires. Unfortunately, a lot became millionaires overnight and then lost it just as fast. That's, you know, the markets that we're in. But, yeah, my firm belief is if you've got, a, I would say, sort of twenty to $40,000 in the market right now, and again, a good mix between uh, high, uh, high cap, mid cap, and some low caps, you probably won't be far off a million dollars if you sell uh, at the right time next year. Again, not financial advice. Please don't take it as financial advice. But, you know, again, come back to me and let me know. But it is about, you know, selling, you know, at the right time, basically at the peak, which I think could be anywhere from next September through to maybe next uh, yeah, next September, so September 2021, right through to maybe February uh, 2022. I don't know exactly where the peak's going to be. I think it'll be somewhere about there. And look, if we go back and check the charts, and that's all we can do is, you know, go off our history. The peak, December. The peak, December. Uh, and I don't know if this goes back far enough. I don't think it does. Uh, basically, there was another peak uh, around about December. So the peaks have generally come around about December. So chances are this peak will be December 2021, so next December. But look, it could be a little bit earlier. 
it could be a little bit later because of uh, you know the mass adoption that hasn't come yet. You'll have to work it out for yourselves. But yeah, interesting times ahead. Again, this really isn't. It's not that much. Uh, things are going to get a lot crazier as the retail FOMO starts. All right, I won't uh, drag this on any longer. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train at the moment. We all should be. And I'll see you next time.